right about now. She is a beauty queen. Yani ukimwona tu hivi. It took a while. You go like, huh? Who's hosting this show? She looks so good, complete with her sash. Yani, beauty queen, a mom of three. And today we are here talking about, you know, being a mom with kids who have special needs. Selby, so welcome to the show. You Thank look you. gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Atimendi kwa Miss Nani? Miss Africa, United Nation. MS, not M-I-S-S. -S. Mm. Oh, okay. Just checking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everyone assumes it's a Miss M-I-S-S. Yes, -S -S. yes. But yeah, of course with kids, it, yeah. It's, it's a miss with MS. MS yes. Karibu sana. Thank you very much, Mikali. I am, you, there's so much to talk about. I, I hope know. we have the time. I hope so. But I think we'll just dive in with, um, you know, you being a mom. And I don't think there's anything that prepares us for the child. And we, we, yes, we are told. Mm -hmm. You need to be loving. You need to, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. But now having a child or, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a mother and having a child with special needs, mm -hmm. I don't think we're prepared for that. Nobody tells no, us. No one, no one ever even mentioned this. Nobody. You, know, you never even think it until now it lands in your laps and then yeah. it's like a crash course, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you're being told, okay, this is the plane, let's fly. We're going to Miami and you're looking at all those controls and like, no idea. Where do I start? What do I do? You know? So that's how it feels. That's how exactly. How it old feels. were you when you, fought, when you got your first one? My first child, I think, 21. 21. So, so when you they were say also very young. Yeah, no, but you see, they always say, oh, you're over is this, at TCG, when uh, you're yeah, They said you're powerful. So <laughs> That's the thing. I'm, I'm worried at 32. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's about time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So at 21, you d that's not even, like, it's not even 22. 22. 22. Yeah, because I was married at 21. Yeah. So 22, yeah. Nobody Terrible. prepares you for that. No, and I'm you don't even you. expect it. No. No, my mm -hmm. firstborn is perfectly okay, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. got my firstborn. I lost one in between. Got my secondborn. Mm -hmm. It was a normal pregnancy until now, last minute. Uh, the only sad thing is, like, I'm a workaholic, like, nobody's business. So sometimes I blame that for all of this. Then after that, you're like, okay, something's not right. You know, you always know how you raised your first child and yeah. how milestones were met and stuff like that. Then you get this baby, and he was so handsomely beautiful and you're like i wish you were a girl but then you're like okay this is what god gave me focus embrace focus. it <laughs> <laughs> and then um i started noticing like he was shivering we had so many gastro issues like issues with the stomach mm -hmm. he had jaundice he had reflux like you know the, the way when you go to clinic and they hit the knee and then yes. he jacks yes. so like he's even before so it's called like it was high reflex okay his reflex was quite high but then the, the uh, then he was lactose intolerant that means also i couldn't take milk because it was breastfeeding there was just too many complications then my dad is like hey she, you've noticed your son's head is not quite stable as yet you know you're so preoccupied with all these other things yeah. adjusting because it was that i got him through cs you're adjusting to that life you haven't been here before and then one day I go to the doctor, I'm like, why does my son look like he's shaking mm -hmm. and he's quite warm? Then the doctor's like, ah, it's just a habit, maybe it will end. A I'm habit. like, a habit, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Then one day, full blast convulsions, you know, kifafa. Yeah. So I'm a mom, I'm like, this child's eyes have rolled back, he's shaking, oh he's shivering, goodness. he's all mm -hmm. stiff. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what to do. I just cramped and. Uh, no, like now my then husband came into the room and we were like, okay, what's going on? Let's then I called now the, the 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 doctor and I'm like, this is what is happening. I have no idea what to do. So you just turn him to the side and because us in we are always told put a spoon, which is the wrongest don't, don't thing. Do it. Never, never. Don't I, do it. Uh, that needs to be changed because yes. actually you can actually harm a child at that point because they they do it differently. So we waited it out. At that time you're not driving, you're not what, and then hey, Lord Jehovah. But anyway, <laughs> we just <laughs> went to the doctor. Because you have no idea no what's going idea. on. So checks what you're told you need to do, a CT scan, you need to do all these scans, and you're just looking at your financials. At that time, you're still hustling. And you're like, where on earth? Some of these things I'd never heard yeah. of in my life. MRI, I don't know, brain scan, and then EEG. It is a lot. So like, that's when now life starts taking a plunge to a direction you have no idea. So this was around, uh, this thing started earlier, so he was put on medication. Then now we, we were like, okay, let's pace this, you know, investigations. Because you, you, at that time, did I even have insurance? Could I afford insurance? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because so yeah. you're being told God, what test is like 30 grand. We're yes, talking 2010. That is cash. Yes. No one is negotiating with you, no. my dear. So you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I need to do this. So now you even have to panga your salary. Those ones of like, okay, 
let's face then after a while i had to quit my job because now i'm forever in hospital i'm forever here so even the income that is coming that was coming yes now was kaput so i decided okay i can try and do my own business because i need to balance my life this and then at that time also uh hubby was out for a while then he was now trying to get back to work and stuff like that because someone's got something's got to give right yeah and then we go then you're told okay there is some brain in his head that was not up to par but now the part that i didn't tell you was when i was giving birth what actually prompted i was working on a project that was very intense so it was very stressful when i was pregnant so he came preterm like a month in advance okay so my water's partly drained mm. you know the way you wake up and you're like because my first child my waters were broken so i'd never experienced that story of like oh your water's broken so i just went that to my boss lady and i'm like i think i've seen a spot on my chair what could be wrong so i just called her like meet me here we're going to Husi now mm -hmm. that was at, like 8 p.m. I just signed off that TPS Serena project because I was handling uh, all the graphics and whatnot so I finished and off hospital you have emergency scan you have to wait for the doctor to be called then you're told okay the waters have drained we give it time we see if it's going to fill back in and then we see you stay days then you're like okay nothing is happening this baby has to come out yeah so then that that injection for making their lungs you know then you, we start induction. I was inducted like three times, nothing. Actually, the last two, my induction was going in reverse. Huh? You know the way, like, oh yeah, yeah it gets it's intense. Up. No, I was not opening nothing. It was just like intense, 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 disappeared. So they were like, chick now we just have to reel you in. You know those times you're asking for, you're being told you need consent. Then you remember you, you budgeted, eh? We may budget normal delivery or being told cs is this much then that's when you start saying all your hail marys <laughs> and, <counting>. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby has you to know, come the baby has to come it has to be now and then yeah, you're being told now. like yeah. you have an hour to make up your mind yes because it was in the evening because the doctor should what if i choose enough. not to go that direction it's not, it's no, not, it's not like there's it's no option of, it's a matter of life and death, death yeah exactly you're being yeah. told you choose you and your you or your child dying or us doing this and trying to save either Boy. A or both because you see remember i've said this whole time the water hasn't yes. regenerated yes. the baby's already tired from that you know inductions and stuff like mm -hmm. that so those are some of very tough decisions after you can imagine after going through labor the way it's painful because mm -hmm. it was it was like the pain was real chic anyway so we made the decision let's really now i'm like can we go in together i told no so you go in knock out then i wake up uh, and I'm like, okay, what happened? What I'm told, okay, the baby came, it's a boy, and uh, he's in HDU. And you're like, oh, what? He was like, yeah, he had difficulties in breathing when he was born, so yeah, we had to put him in, in the incubator. Uh, I was like, okay. okay. So that time, you're like, you know, the way you wake up first, and you're like, okay, something is funny. Then you wake <laughs> up, and you're like, oh, I was oh yeah, reminder, this yes. is what happened. Yes. You know, yes. that pain of, I can't sit, I can't. So the next day my daddy comes my dad has always been my hero number one would seen you know like first thing in the morning 6 a.m <laughs> he's always there so and then uh then i was like i woke up now at like two i'm like dad i need to see my son then he showed me a photo i'm like okay is he okay he's not so i could see it like he was on all this mm -hmm. and i asked could i see him i tried to get off my bed i knocked out like my world went on a spin i couldn't focus i couldn't think it's like you know if you've ever done uh deep diving when you go so mm -hmm. deep under that pressure yes i was inducted i was induced like a blackout so i reacted to the medication for nini what are they anesthesia yes so i'd reacted to that i didn't know because then now i woke up again i'm like i have to see my son because i when i was actually trying to also he can't come out unless you go see him so yeah i was knocked off so i had to see him now you can imagine now this is like hours hours uh, like Later. day three now is when i'm able to so i was like just bring him to me see they tried to remove the baby from the nini he turned purple back yeah trust you me so that was the beginning before all this other drama of jaundice and whatnot that came after so that process well, the point is during that process of during the delivery and those first five uh first years are very crucial when it comes to special needs because yeah. something small can just turn the life of your child mm -hmm. you imagine how the child is handled that pre-labor uh situation those are some of the things that actually um sort of like Lent, uh, yeah the affect because you yeah. see special needs and in particular neurodevelopmental disabilities can i say that slower Ooh, so, girl <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yes all right so <laughs> <laughs> neurodevelopmental disabilities that yes. neuro that is brain and yes. then development so yes. some of these disabilities just come either that lack of oxygen that small span when you're making mm -hmm. that decision yes. or a mismanagement during the bath and you know the way we always hear like oh this something went wrong something yeah. small yeah. that small thing can 
be the cause of either autism, cerebral palsy, but Down syndrome is more genetic, mm. you know, and then we have other rare diseases that are caused by very many things. But those first two is what uh, really needs to be watched. Uh, a part of me normally feels like these parallel programs, <laughs> you know. Anyway, I won't go there, <laughs> but you get my <laughs> point. So I do, I do. At six months, uh, when we were going now, when we could finally afford yes. to do the CT's head scan the mm -hmm. night before, I, uh, there is something I'm trying all the try to remember which was the night before or the day after. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I don't feel so good. Then you go and do that cut test and you're told, you're pregnant. You're like, no way. <laughs> I'm like, you cannot tell me this is a special time. And then tell me this is, I was like, no, this is not happening. But then I was like, I can't deal. What? Yes. So you can imagine all this drama. And then, because the last thing you see now with us mothers, you're <laughs> the last thing you think about. Yes, you are at CG at the oh, after delivery, I need to do CG mm -hmm. at the contrast. It Zero. was nowhere. So, six in months mind. in, yes, we're taking a very <laughs> short commercial <laughs> break. <laughs> Sylvia over here has decided to just you know let it all out. <laughs> if you have any questions, kindly remember to send them on triple one, triple four, triple one. We're taking a very short commercial break, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali, with the beauty queen herself in the building. And we're talking about, you know, having kids or raising kids who have special needs. Mikali, ask Sylvia, how old was the baby when she, when he got the first convulsion? Th uh, three months. Three months. Yeah. Hi, Mikali. Loving the discussion today. They are all very positive. I have a question for Sylvia. She's so pretty. I agree. <laughs> They can't can't believe she's a mom of three. How does she cope with the two kids with special needs? It's a real struggle for moms out here. Mm. Okay. So we, we've just we've just even covered just the baby the, number the, one. The how we'll it get, comes. You know, like <laughs> now we are here. We don't even have the money for this. Comes and boom. I think we're pregnant. <laughs> exactly. And you're like, how am I gonna deal with this? Actually, in all honesty. I went to my mom first, it was my friend, and I'm like, I can't deal. You know, at that time you have to be okay with it yourself yes. before you even start telling. So I'm like, I'm looking at this child and all now the new terms and conditions after the diagnosis. Remember, we still don't know he is autistic. We no. just know he has a convulsive disorder. Yes. So you're put on daily medications and um, you're told that these are the side effects. And you're like, okay, let's let's try adjust. Then you're told now you have to stop breastfeeding. You're thinking, how, what is it going to He's lactose intolerant. He's like, now special diet for a six stress your teta mazio ili enda peke yake. So that I told you pregnant and I'm like, mom, I can't handle me. I think in all honesty, let me just get that consent to just get rid of this one so that I focus on this. Yes. My mom is thinking the way you know culturally you've been blacklisted for having Ye girls because yes. there are three girls, one boy. <laughs> like, uh, give birth, please, and give me, I will. Oh my God, so you know moms like, are always like you that know, though. No, but it's hard. You know, people yeah. don't get the level of pressure that you can be handling at that time. Yeah. And um, at that time, we were also, we had separated for a while, so mm -hmm. the second time. So marital issues, special needs child. You're pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is just a bit too much for me. So I told my friend, she's like, whatever decisions uh, you make, I will support you. That was my best friend. And I prayed about it. And I was like, okay, God, you have a reason as to why you're giving me this baby. And actually, I'd like to say happy birthday to my son, oh. Bradley, because today is <laughs> his birthday. So what? I kept him. And he's been the light of my life, joy. Like he's the most loving, joyous human being oh, ever. He is just happy birthday, happy Bradley. birthday, Bradley. I hope he's awake. But yeah, he's he's been a light. I know why God gave me that child now. I didn't know then, but yes. I appreciate that decision that I made at that point mm -hmm. to keep this child because there are moments in times when I don't even know I'm low and I'm sad. But that special, you know, ch special children have their own special gifts. Yes, he come intuitive. hug me and just say, "Mommy, are you okay?" He loves that statement. Are you okay? Okay, mommy. I love you. And he will go. What? And that's it. And that's Brad for you. Everyone is my friend. He's huggy. He's, you oh, know, all the emotions, what? that positive vibes that you need in one. Yeah. So uh, awesome birthday. So I gave birth <laughs> <laughs> while still adjusting <laughs> to this other life. And I had to quit my job, I told you. So now yes. I have a new business. I have a new baby. I have a marriage I'm trying to fix. And I made it. I'm here. I'm alive. So Brad, uh, then now when Andrew was three, um, when Brad was, let's finish with Brad's entry, it was also like, it was, I was in pain the entire pregnancy. What? 
I was on, on painkillers. I even discovered ice cream can be a, a medici medicine for pain. Yeah, no. low abdominal. Trust me, I didn't have a ice cream. Yeah, kukula <laughs> mune kelea kwa tumbu. No, kukula. What? Like ice cream. Thank ice God I like ice cream. <laughs> yeah, so at some point, the doctor was like, we can't be on meds anymore. We need this baby out. So that's another preterm baby. Oh so God. even I was like admitted for a while because they can't find what is wrong. And you know, the baby looks is developing okay. So Bradley comes early and then after that we discover it was appendici appendicitis. So one week after CS, I go under In the cut. Again? Yes. And one week after that, I my marriage went south and that was the end. That was the last. So we left when my child was three weeks old is when now my marriage ended. Yes. So we went to live with a friend of mine for a while until I could figure my stuff out because mm. remember I'm nursing a CS I'm nursing like you know when they do an appendicectomy they dunga here dunga yes. here and here so I'm nursing all of this um, I have a new business that I'm trying to figure out how it's going to run I had a big project about starting and that's when I met my mentor like God aligns everything for you oh in God. ways you have no, no idea. idea and the days I look back and I'm like how, how did I get out of that like from sleeping outside you know to actually he slept outside. as in we had to like leave everything then everyone is like go back home you're thinking guy the way I left to go with a big wedding you know those my oh, books I know. of like how am I going back to my parents house and me being the go-getter that I am mm -hmm. I was like okay I need to make this work so I was like uh can you host us for a while like yeah a week tops I should have figured myself out so that means uh the way at your maternity leave at your CS what I have no, to and forget you have, that you have you, you a three-week old child yes. and, and the other one also needs old you. child and a special one that time yes. I was like 40 I was like no and then my body was it? No, this time is not when, uh, when after Andrew is when my body ballooned. Like, I, I couldn't tell if it was water retention, but I was eh, the fattest ever. So, <laughs> uh -huh. so, um, so baby Brad arrives and he's got, I'm like, wh which child comes into this life where we don't have power, we don't have water, I can't afford diapers. Actually, I, 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 sh the, I had a bill of like 80 something K that's still outstanding. I think at Aga Khan that the doctor just said, it's Misawa okay to just go home. It's okay. You know, it gets to that point. I just had to be clean. I'm like, dude, I'm so low. I know I owe you, but whatever I can, I will pay. So I think that that anesthesis, I always say, God, let me win a lottery one day so that I can at least, you know, that debt that is just at the back. Because I'm like, it never it leaves was, you. Yeah, my son's life, you yeah. know. So I look at that and I'm like, I should be able to do this one day, one time, you know, just random yeah. and, and go back. Because at that time, you're like, you're the man, you deal with it. And, you know, when you're having wrangles uh, and you also get tired you get worn out is it the babies is this this so that was it at the point i was you like yeah i had to choose yeah. a side and i was like you just go sort yourself when you're ready to deal with all of this let me just have at least one thing to think about yeah. and that's how baby two came and a few years later he's also not andrew this time is not catching up his milestone he's not walking he's not talking uh, he had eye contact at least then i'm like okay maybe brad is also because now as they're growing brad also now is slow then when I did assessment for Andrew to actually know if he's autistic or not, because mm -hmm. someone whispered, then I'm like, okay, let's go do like assessment. Then you're told, yeah, definitely autistic. Uh, he needs this, he needs therapy, he needs this. Know. No, I've never heard of the <laughs> word autism in my life, chick. I only knew, I was, you know, when you're being told now it's autism and then you have the convulsive disorder. And this convulsive disorder, you're told your child will be on medication for the next at least bare minimum five years unless he does two years without uh two years without having an episode mm -hmm. then now you can start withdrawing the medication yes. then now you're telling me when i went now to take him then the assessor is like can i also check this one i'm looking at him like what are you trying to talk Don't do it you know like please let's not even go there yeah you know like i i have enough on my plate oh god then I was like, okay, let's just watch them. Then you're like, tendencies, let's give him another one year. Another one year. You know the way you meet someone random? I'm like, I'd like to assess. Then you go. Then you're like, I can see. Because I was redoing the assessment. You know, you pray and you're like, God, this thing will go away. Yes. And you're like, I can do everything. Because I even put him in a regular school. And it's just not going away. And you can tell, like, he was not, he's not social. Because part of the nini is they have a difficulty socializing. Yes. He'll always be at that corner on his own. He has an, uh, an addiction to, like, sticks. He started talking. My, my son called me mom when he was five. I waited five years to hear that word, mom. Five. What? So the, the moments that, and the things that parents typically take for granted. Yes. Waiting for that child to just wake up and walk. 
because one of the episodes of uh, the convulsions, he had started crawling, you know, he had made some progress. Then we had one very bad convulsion. And you see, the thing with convulsions is like they kill the brain cells. Mm -hmm. So, and if it continues for too long, it can lead to death. Yeah. And the worst case is there is the time that it went on for like a whole, this was, we had moved out trying to rebuild a life this one morning. He just starts on the day elections for the first time UK ran. I'll yes. never forget that day in my life because I'm hustling, trying. I had even evacuation notices. You know, those ones of you can't hack. I used to have one meal a day so that the boys have, because now they're special, they need like none. Because yes. for my second born, with all this drama, I couldn't produce. I lost weight. I was 48 kilos. They people think I'm small now. By the way, this is the fattest I can get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like, I was like 48 kilos looking like I've stolen kids. You know, like the way um, they have a baby. Like yours, no, no not at all. My son was like here. So he used to be the carrier of my bag. Yes. Then I had uh, Andrew on the back. Yes. And this tiny baby like this. At 48 kgs. Chickly, there is a time I walked in town council. Madam, kwa nima maya watoto kako wapi? Like even clinic, they just be looking at you, those are strong. Because you can't leave them with anyone. At that time, I had one nanny we had to go with. And she was so quiet. I was like, at least she stuck with me through that. Okay. You know, through this difficult time. Because sometimes I'm like, as much as she was not as engaging with the boys, because I was like, if she was that talkative, at least maybe they would have started picking things, done things faster. You know, there is a day I came, I like I slept, I couldn't wake up because I was just not eating, working too much, and my body couldn't wake up that day, and she assumed I'd left. So I wake up, I find my kids, one in a basin, the other one just crawling, the TV is off, her, she's uko anautajua, amefanya morning work, and I'm like, is this what my kids go through every day? What? You know that pain? Yes. And you're like, niki mfukuza wapi? Yeah. You know? Nani, like, if I start on nani dramas, that's a whole show on its own. Oh my god. Because you can't find someone who will embrace them mm -hmm. for who they are. Because remember, these kids are nonverbal. As yes. much as Andrew said, mom, it took him another two years to be able to say a sentence. Even now, he can only respond in like a few words. He understands fully. He can sing. Remember, one people are always confused singing and talking. Those are two different departments. He knows the latest Niger and, <laughs> and Nini bongo songs. Some that I don't know. <laughs> but having a conversation is a challenge. Mm. So that, that's the one lesson but they're two totally different uh, parts of the brain that operate the musical and actually they communicate we're getting school yeah this yeah <laughs> brad him he started at three catching up now he wasn't verbal also he started talking right now he's a parrot i'm like dude can you shut up for a minute you know <laughs> <laughs> so when the assessment came they were like he has tendencies of autism not severe but what we conclusively found out was like he has adhd okay. this is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder you know Schools to see here. I was about to go there because chick, you go here. You're told we can deal. We can deal. You go one week. Let me tell you the most painful one that I'll never forget. That I cried. They're like, yeah, we take special kids. I take him. I'm like, all I want is progress, right? So for me, I'm like, yeah, he's now potty trained. He can take himself to the toilet. He knows how to say susu and whatnot. That to me, as a special parent, is a big deal. You know, diapers out. Hey, chica used to pay. Okay. Then one day they come back and they give me a report form. And it's cannot, cannot. You know the way they say oh fair, God. good, yes. everything is not. I've ever felt like your life crashes before you. I cried. I was like, God, what is this? And then now I was called for a meeting. Later they were like, I, there is no, me, I'm like, I was clear. Is it you paying the fee? Mm -mm. No, it is me. I want him to socialize. The fact that he knows turn taking, yes. the fact that he can spend time with other children, mm -hmm. the fact that at least he's saying one one word, the fact that he can at least rot account. Because you see, repetition, there are parts of the brain that are very active. Yes. That repetition is very okay. I'm okay with that. They're, they're like, no, how do we grade? I don't know, who, did, who told you when you have to grade this child? Can you just let him be? And there was only one teacher who could handle him. So he's sitting, looping in the same class because the other teachers cannot handle. Yeah. So I always say just make the right decision at the right time. Because if I, but see the other thing is I couldn't afford a special school. So even life itself, <laughs> life itself also gives you, you know, like yeah. blockages. Because I couldn't afford to take my son to a special school. Because mm -hmm. that you're telling me at 50 grand a term, others one per child, month. One child. Yes. So Remember I have the older one. Eh? Yes. Yes. I have this one. This other one is catching up. Yes. 
and you're thinking your kabiashara is just starting. Yep. You, you know when you regret quitting your job. <laughs> okay, you appreciate because you have time to be able to handle your kids. Yes. But then we look on this other side and you, you're like, okay, how am I going to deal with this? There are people God put in my life. I tell you. You meet people, I always say, for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And you never know what God has in store for you when he's making you meet that one yeah. person. Because there are people who've stood with me. And to this day, I cannot say if I'll be where I am if those people did not walk into my life. And I want to say a special thank you to, to them. Let me not, uh, yeah, see you know. But I, they but know the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At what point did Andy Speaks get birthed? Because you are mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. the hard way. The hard way. Pekiako, mm -hmm. you're the one who's being told these big words. You're the one mm -hmm. who's being told we cannot. You're the one who's learning that... Um, they they have these tendencies that they cannot feed them this the doctors are telling you this and this and this and this mm. and this. for you to be able to create a pa platform where now you are dispatching mm. this information on also allowing other moms mm. to come on board and share the same at what point did that begin um at, in 2015 i had to have a meeting with myself eh? okay. and like, i did something called alabaster because you see i remember i've packed the fact that i, I had a divorce for yes. total fool whatever you pack it like the things in life you pack on the side mm -hmm. so i set goals and then it got to this 2018 was a very specific year i was questioning god because you see also your spirituality the problem is in our country, there is all this, oh, you must have done something. Because everyone looks at you as the parent. You did something. Because mm -hmm. even when after I said, oh, now I'm divorced, everyone's like, what did you do? I'm like, I, please. did I have to have done so something? Like, does it have to be me? Yeah. You know, like you take that seat back and you realize as a woman, you're at a disadvantage. And the earlier you realize and you realize that you have to m double mark time and everything that you do will be judged. Yeah. Good or bad, you will be judged for it. That People so will true. make presumptions about you, yeah. all the decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. Everyone is going to judge you by that. So in 2018, my main question to God was, why give me two special kids alone in this, you know, I always you know, say, I know feel like I got with. to a forest. I was told, Chikdi, crossover, akuna map, akuna la headlight, no to Just go. figure it out. That's how special needs parenting actually feels. Because every day is a dead block. You figure it out. You make mistakes. And there is no information. There is no statistics. There is so much stigma, first of all. So I decided if you give me. So there is one verse that God sent me for a whole consistent month. Uh, um, Proverbs 31, 8 to 9. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and speak for my people. Speak on behalf of those oppressed and ensure that justice is done. <sighs> exactly that. So it was not making sense. I like motivational. I open it's that same verse in a different whatever. My morning book was like the same thing. But I was like, okay. And this one day I was in church. And Brad, Andrew, you know, they can't save in a space for a while. So Andrew was like, I'm done, I'm done. He started screaming, whatever. I'm like, okay, there we go. And you know, in Kato, that consecration time is like that very special moment. Quiet. You know? Yeah. You know, we, we had already gotten used to the eyes and daggers when he starts. You know, they're like, I need some soul food, you know. So we stepped outside. Then, of course, now I have to be outside watching them. Then this lady, like, fights through people, gets to me. And she's like, hi, I know you don't know me. I just have one message. Uh, God says he knows and he understands why you had to leave at that point. But he wants you to know that he loves you. What? And Chikdi goes. And I'm left there thinking like, Me okay. Me cry buckets. No, I like first of all, you're trying to make it like, what are you talking about? <laughs> then um, there was that shooting that happened in the US of a uh, hubby killed wife, killed himself, left, you know, three kids. That was my cousin. I had just spent summer with her. Yes. They, that, like a short while before. So there is that. I have to think of travel because uh, like not many of us had been in touch she had grown up at our house for a mm. while and I, I was like the last one from here to go visit and then now comes this death and then i had lost my one of my best friends and everything was crashing around me so i asked god what's my purpose if you're taking everyone close to me yeah. why am i here because when i looked at a photo and i'm seeing i'm the only one alive yeah. you question yourself like yes. okay i'm next have i lived my life have i delivered what i need to do because even when i went to new york for the funeral i was at the mall trying to fix my phone was being fixed i was with my niece then this white lady comes and says god loves you huh i turn she's gone ask my niece did someone like yeah there's a lady who just came and left and i'm like Okay, now this is getting weird, weird. and scary. Yeah. So I came back, I told, because it was, I mixed my birthday, that, my sister's wedding, then I came back and I told my mom, 
I think I can't handle this. It's it's just too much. Because even when I came back and a friend of mine died. So I was like, I need time. So these are the kids. This is the nanny. I went to meditate with my sis. She's in the UK. And everywhere I met, a spe I met a special needs teacher. A special needs what? You go even back to a party. You're meeting a special needs. Then I was like, okay, I'm hearing you. I'm yeah. hearing you. <laughs> you know? You're pretty but, loud uh, right you now. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I hear you. So now I came back. I was like, okay, message well sent. This is why I give you these children. Yes. I need you to follow through. So now me being the perfectionist, okay, so what name is it going to be? When is it? You know, <laughs> there we are. What yes. are Ashara. How am I going to do this? Because, you know, the other thing is like, and then there was that, that part he said, Moses could not speak. Yep. And look at where he ended up. Yep. You know, just start. You and I remember leave, my yes. best friend told me, just, you know, at least know what it is. I wrote, I wrote, I researched, I did all that. The eve of uh, 2019, Daily Nation did my story. And they said, my, my, fan, my son first called me mom at five. Yeah. Then that, that's when now the word came, and he speaks. Yeah, because he actually yes, spoke. Yes, he actually spoke. Like, so I was like, so Andy speaks for the rest of his kind, the yes. rest of the children who cannot speak for themselves. Yes. I will speak for the mothers who don't know what is oh going on God. in their lives. So that's where the name Andy Speaks for Special Needs Persons came my from. God, I have goosebumps. <laughs> And my time so is running out. Yeah, my time sadly. is running out. Mm -hmm. And oh, what happens on this particular platform? So for anybody who's watching and they'd yeah. like to be part of it, but they're confused and they do not know, or just looking for information, for or information. maybe even mm -hmm. another woman to just talk to. Yeah. I, I, I all trust you. It's my <laughs> daily, my DM is always, I'm going, I need, I need. And so what I did to towards that, I've uh, set up a platform. I'm trying to consolidate all these, you know, those dead blocks of school, hospital, mm. therapies. Because, you know, you start being told you need therapy. You've never heard yes. of the word therapy in your life. Mm-hmm. But now you have to make it happen. Yep. So I'm consolidating all this. So I started a website. It was my 35th birthday present to all special needs fraternity. Yes. So I opened a site called Special Needs Info Hub, where we're trying to put the correct definition, the signs and symptoms, the different types of the neurodevelopmental disabilities for parents to be able to access. And as Andy speaks, we are the ones who will sit in that BBI platform and say, okay, our kids exist. They're not being, you know, yep. when they call for uh, amendments of bills, we try and voice for our children because you see if you don't walk our journey you have no idea, idea. what That's we're going true. through so we are the voice of our special needs children in all the matters policies for health education social protection because when i did my research uk their social protection is like way over here i think that had to to me answer <laughs> so you're there like representing the rest of the parents with government with stakeholders with parastatals actually just last week we were setting uh i was i was honored to be called by the ministry of education and kise to give input of how do we want our children to go back to school can it yeah. actually happen because yeah. you see for you as a policy maker you have the general skeleton if you ask me because when you sat there that's when i was you see it opens your eyes like then these guys cannot see this mm, you know because mm, but you, mm. you get to understand if someone doesn't walk it they will have they will no never idea understand. What i think challenges so that you need to come back we need to have a day &A <laughs> where people there's so many questions there's so much okay. love for you on social mm -hmm. media and maybe we'll just take a look at it when um mm -hmm. you get out of the studio All right. but kuna love mingi sana so much maybe sms more just in your boys <laughs> so, um morning mikali say hi to that beautiful lady and ask her how what keeps her going that is maggie from nax oh, <laughs> you know uh what keeps you motivated mm -hmm. and keeps you grounded in this journey that you take god my children and a promise to myself to be the best version of who i can be so long as it glorifies god's name i'll be the vessel and the voice for it perfect yeah. i got my baby through cs akawekwa three days kwa incubator akapata jaundice after five after five months mm -hmm. then the head was still shaking then two years later he convulsed three mm -hmm. days consecutively bila oh, wow. akawekwa tubes in the nose ndo akule a week later akawa but uh, it was tough. Mams go through a lot. Big up, Sylvia. Uh, God loves you. Hi, Mukali. I'm proud of Mara. I really adore her fighting spirit. That is Cornelius Kim Go Kimur Gor Sanga mm -hmm. from Nadi Hill. So much love for you. Thank you. And social media ni Andy Speaks. Yes, Twitter Andy Speaks number four. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram is Andy Speaks. Facebook, it's a group where we share and encourage. And uh, we also connect you to other gr smaller groups on WhatsApp when okay. you reach out. We have a project that we're supporting the most needy with medication that is been like, as Miss Africa, that's been one of the projects that I've been <laughs> I'm doing. I'm so sorry, we didn't even talk about. <laughs> 
you are such a and you being a beauty queen. But we really don't have time. Thank I know. you so much. God Thank bless you. you. Keep doing what you're doing. And yes, happy birthday, Brad. Bradley. We love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a very short commercial break. We'll be yes. right back. This is Full Circle with Mukali.